today we are here with Anna Twenty and we're at her home in Elizabeth, Colorado. It's a lovely home. So thank you for inviting us in. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, I'm fascinated because you just got back from Costa Rica. I did. And it's it's been a long time in the making, actually. And it's something I wanted to do for many, many years, partially for the nature aspect. Actually, I'll tell you what, what I didn't realize taking Reiki there was how much the land would influence our retreat. And one would naturally think you should be aware and mindful of it, but I wasn't. And so we went at Aranon and where the volcano is. And picture this, being on top of a beautiful hill, probably a thousand feet high. To your left, you have the jungle. There is a drop off to the jungle and you can see the parakeets come in and occasional macaw. To your right, you have, um, again, a little bit of nature and more of a hill type atmosphere. And to the front, you have the volcano with the lake. We're on top of it doing Reiki doing Reiki and the Reiki was included so that people would connect actually with the horses more and it was all about how do we take the energy healing to the horses but as I'm doing the Reiki and facilitating the sessions the land became really important hmm. and the power and I've not studied Chinese medicine but the power of having the volcano so the fire having the beautiful lake the water there and then having the animals in the jungle was really profound. So much so that one of the sessions, there was extreme Reiki registers, so extreme behavior patterns during, during the Reiki. And one of the signals that I took the session was to complete was the wind coming through. It was like the final piece. So you've got everything there. And I'm watching this individual having tons and tons of extreme releases, calling in the powers that be, and it was the wind that put the gust through to seal it. That was, a, that was a beautiful moment. So to see the change in the people, the extremities or the extreme realizations, that came as a surprise. That's wonderful. So it was as much a retreat for you, actually. Yeah. And I think you, did you go there with the idea that you're creating an experience for your students that came along with you? Yeah, and it, exactly. you ended up being gifted in exchange. I, you know, and I was gifted, and I was gifted in many ways because of the animals, and we were calling in the animals during the Reiki, and that's really neat that you might open the heart space or indeed think that somebody could appear, but it was really the birds. A ton of birds would come in, be it that it, you could hear the toucans or you could feel, see the macaws, whatever it might be. But the huge piece of being attuned in such an environment allowed for the horsemanship to to become more profound if you want wow. and for that connection of of learning how to assess a horse but also give back to the horse and watch the reiki being absorbed by these horses that are giving tourist rides and although they might be well kept in a land that for many would struggle there mm -hmm. these horses were receiving instead of just giving so we took it to the horses. And that, that was a big thing, actually. So there was an arena just here, and the locals would walk by up there, and they'd look down as to what we could do. And I'm smiling because there's the horsemanship piece, right? But at the same time, you're kind of doing something more woo-woo. So I'm, oh, God knows what <laughs> yeah, they're Yeah, they're probably looking down going, let's see this cowgirl work, and then we're doing the woo-woo. So the horses were in the arena free, not exactly glazed over as a whole, but but there was a piece certainly they were they were relaxed waiting for the next ride. They were relaxed uh, to a degree disassociating and hard work. They would climb four thousand feet wow. in twenty minutes. So here they are in the arena and we all go with the Reiki and it's one of the few times I've seen a lot of changes in horses, but I've not seen backs lift colour coming to the fur. The eyes sparkle, horse starting to play. And these were really, really special moments that were extreme, that maybe you wouldn't see such a large change in other Reiki sessions that you do. Do you think, my, besides the environment, um, what I've had shared with you before yeah. is that in other countries, other cultures, horses are really, they're a work unit. They are, they, really, yeah. they have a job and yeah. they aren't perceived like we might 
They don't take in pet dogs. Right. And they don't have pet horses. They have work units. Dogs live outside. They have a function and a job. They don't go into the house. They're not part of your human existence except yeah. as a extension to whatever you're trying to achieve. Yes. Um, and so those horses respond, I think, differently then because it may be the first time. That's how I saw it. I know, I know it was the first time. And we yeah. had, we'd ridden them and we'd been part of their lives for three days. And one of the things was that, gen- <laughs> and there's this rhyme, generally speaking, we'd been told that this ride would take three hours. So an hour up, an hour at the waterfall with a picnic, an hour back. We took six. Now, me as a horse whisperer, I'm looking at this going, how could this have been done any differently? We did not dawdle. We had experienced horsewomen there. Everybody knew how to ride. Everybody was considerate of the horse. We took X amount of hours, two hours to get up, one hour of the waterfall, the next amount of time back. And we're looking at that to go, how could that be condensed? And the only thing we did differently was allow the horses to breathe when they asked to stop. They, they literally asked to stop to go, I've got to get my breath back. And we let them stop. And, and there are a number of the students that got off and said, it's so steep, we're going to allow the horses not to have us on their back and we'll walk. The outfitters, I think, were, were, they were shocked. They thought there was something wrong with the students. <laughs> and they, they were looking at us going, is she okay? <laughs> yes, she's just letting all horse breathe. But the other piece was, your horses need to breathe. They might be fit, but they're they're not they're not being rude stopping. They literally their heart we could feel the heartbeat. Their heartbeat had to recover. Yep. And that was what we did differently. So and you, it took double the length of time for a ride that would normally be three hours. Wow for the fact that And these are athletic horses if you think about they condition like that every day. Actually. Then they do do it every day with other tourists. Oh. But this was these were people that were considerate. I didn't ask them to get off the horses. They naturally said, I, I want my horse to have a break. And they'd be in mud this high, and they're steep, and they'd walk for the consideration of the horse. The people had never experienced anything like that before. So here was a ride that we did, and the next day we gave the rig to say thank you, you know, thank you for our experiences. Thank yeah. you for carrying us on your back. Wow, that was a wonderful exchange. Why are you saying that? This is <laughs> Yeah, so that was the magic. And if, if only, you know, you, you videoed to go, if we'd done the before and after, they're standing there doing their thing and then afterwards, bright eyes. But the biggest thing I've, I've not seen is drop backs with the spine. And suddenly I'm looking again and the backs don't look so drop. How, how is that even possible? So that was my piece. Is their coats now look shiny. They, they, they didn't have big muscular butts. And yet everything, their shape changed. That's Who knows beautiful. how long it will last? And you know, a question that I and many others had asked ourselves was, is it right to facilitate the healing and offer heart space to open when they return to the exact place they're going to be in? And I had a profound experience in Morocco last year where I felt guided to, to touch a donkey. He was in the Medina, the marketplace, and he had open wounds at his knees yeah. and he looked exceedingly sad and the guy was next to him and usually I, I would want to shut my heart off and walk by because the thing is it hurts too much and I heard a little voice in my head go um, show love and I thought ah but if I show love I'm going to open his heart space and he'll be left vulnerable and I heard it again and I went okay I'll put my hand on his neck and all I did was I said I see you and I love you, and I, and I cried. And then Joseph, my four-year-old son, saw it and he said, go and tell him you love him. And I took a picture, and in the picture all it looked like was Joseph having his hand on his neck. The picture came out with a green light going through Joseph and the donkey. Oh. And he showed me that it's worth it, that it's okay to say I love you and I see you, and that for that very moment, they feel love. Mm-hmm. I took that experience with me to Costa Rica. And I decided then it was that moment to go, yes, let's give them the love. Let's, let's let them feel it. It's not that they're in a hardship or they're being abused, not like that. But it was still that moment to say, we appreciate you. We have gratitude. We see you. And for a moment, you can feel something you've never felt before, which is you're going to receive instead of have to give. And so it was really wonderful. 
you know what I love about the story is that so many times people think that they want to learn about horses. They want to learn about communication. They want to learn about oils because it's a way of making their horse perform better. But your example really is about the fact that there was more you received through the giving yeah. to those horses than even the ride that day. The yeah. ride was wonderful, yeah. but the thank you that you gave them afterward, you probably had more joy out of that than you did the ride. It was so special. And, and even the feedback from individuals where they came, they came from all over the United States for this experience. And my youngest student was 16. So that was beautiful too. When we look at average ages, you know, I had two teenagers. That's so this is going to open their world up. And they're, they're talented horse women. But it's still another piece to say, here's the energy healing piece. And she took it back. One of them took it back to Washington. And she's got an untouched Mustang and facilitated some energy healing. And said this is the first time she has the better relationship, the closer connection. I think the longer touch. So this is expanding the consciousness, of course, but it's at the same time, it's making that change to realize this is not just a horse with tack. He's going to take me to the waterfall so I can feel joy in a jungle. This is a living, breathing being who's putting his heart and soul into transporting me for multiple hours. And pretty much all of us on the way home, we there was a certain location we got off and walked the horses home. And this is things that the, the guys would never have seen before. Mm. They wouldn't have seen that. And, and that minor change will be huge. You planted yeah, valuable seeds. I think that's, that, yeah. I think that's a takeaway I hear out of here is, is, you know, those little acts of kindness. You know, we have the bumper sticker yeah. now, you know, practice yeah. random acts of kindness. But they're powerful. Right? They make an impression on the guides, the guides who guide you. The people who were the locals who came by and said, what's going on around here? <laughs> Looking down. You know? um, because they are ways of opening. If I live in a culture and I no longer see, and somebody brings in new information, it's, it's that opening that starts to shift their hearts that affect everything in the world. Yes. So, yeah. oh, that, that's a wonderful thing. Now, I understand you also had experience with oh, a rescue. We did. You know what? I actually For planned it the whole second part of the trip around the sanctuary. I don't recall exactly how they'd gotten in touch with me, but at some point they'd reached out and they did an animal communication consultation for them with a baby sloth. Oh. And this baby sloth had lost the use of his or her hind end. So they'd asked how this individual was feeling, but also if he, she could become an ambassador. So I did a a session and I emailed it. It's one of those things when you press that email and send button and it went to Costa Rica. And they really enjoyed it. And it supported them, gave them this perspective and so on. So then I decided when I go to Costa Rica, I'd like to see them, meet with them. So I created the whole trip around it and decided, okay, we're going to do the Pacific side around the sanctuary and built it in that way. And funnily enough, actually, when you give unconditionally, you receive so much, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not and no I'm not, strings attached. Just right. I'm not purely referencing the consultation. We gave unconditionally, and that meant that I uh, we stayed at the guest house. We stayed it's like a little hotel, and we stayed there, and and paid for it. So mm -hmm. literally gave it unconditionally. Said I want to talk to your animals. Can my family stay, please? What we got back was huge hospitality, from lunch dinner to, to a night walk in the jungle. Oh, to literally take your little head cam or your headpiece to see all of the nightlife. So the, the critters, the spiders, the snakes, etc. <laughs> and my son is in his element because Joseph can recognize a spider and a snake and he knows the names and so on. So what we received was being part of the family, yeah. um, being accepted, appreciated, everything. So, so much more than I had intended or envisioned. So there's the beauty of it. So my intention was to support the staff and the volunteers to say, okay, I'd love to talk to some of your animals and I'd love to teach the staff something about energy so that they understand it more, embrace it, or indeed take something to a deeper level. And um, the joy, we set it up, we set up different individuals and they had a little list to say, can you connect with these individuals? And the first one, and it makes me smile because you wouldn't necessarily imagine that at a sloth sanctuary, and it's called Kids Saving the Rainforest, that's the name of the sanctuary. Oh, it's beautiful because 
her daughter had been nine years of age where she decided what could I do some for the rainforest so it's a beautiful beautiful concept beautiful way as to how it's been created but I didn't necessarily think that my first consult would be a skunk <laughs> that was the thing, okay right you go to the rainforest yep. and she's a skunk and she's in this little cage or carrier whatever you want to call it and I remember saying to them where can we go where she feel comfy because she was trying to get out and I'm thinking there's no point connecting she's just trying to get out so the vet's with us and she says let's go out there in the rainforest so we're literally hiking three things and we plant ourselves on the ground and I have a chair to sit on because I didn't want to be amongst the spiders is the big thing and they'd said that too they'd said you might not want to sit down there with a spider absolutely you're quite right I'll sit on the chair and my personal style would be one of connecting and that's how I put it it's not just about taking out the sounds it's really about a solid connection and keeping it that's so important to me because if I was like that I would question I question to myself did you just make that up even after 20 years of doing this it's so important because the, the information has to be solid that I've kept that channel of communication so one way so you're to closing off external close, senses yeah okay hearing sight yeah it's Literally. a matter of going internal so that yes. you can project yeah. out your consciousness. And I used to think it was just because I'd get distracted. Like if I'm here and you move over there or here, I get distracted. It's not about that. It truly is about creating a solid feeling of connection. Mm -hmm. Also honoring the animal to realize I'm just with you, not distracted. I'm totally with you. And to realize there's so many ways that the mind can take us that we've got that open channel. What I like about your approach, too, just as a segue, is um, think about the skunk with what you do or don't know about them. If you've got visual, your brain starts to interpret visual signals, and if you close that down, closed it down. you're only listening. That's right. it. I mean, your internal senses. Yeah. And, and, and following in on a story for her to have the voice. And with her, what was beautiful, you pick up. So when I'm telling her a story, it's different than telling the whole story. The eyes sparkle, I'm lighter, full of joy, because that's who she is. So <laughs> imagine the skunk around your feet and she's nibbling on the toes. So I did raise up my feet and I wasn't sure what she was doing and she's rolling over. And then, of course, there's the human element that goes, I never knew that they played like this. She's like a cat and a dog all in one. Show her <laughs> belly, you can cover her. Mind blown. And then she goes to the vet as well, Sophie. And she'd go between the two. What was really cool, she started off with me, and I had my sandal and I lift it, and then I do the con conversation. She ended with me. Mm -hmm. She came back to my feet. And that's something that both women noticed. Mm -hmm. And they said, what's fascinating is she gravitated towards you during the session. Yeah. And then she'd move off as a hello and a thank you. You could say that way too. But the reason I connected like with her- Like a four-year-old son, right? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the gravitation. So the reason they wanted the connection was they're going to release her, mm. and the whole vision is to either rehab if they're orphaned or if they've been in an accident, and to allow them to go back to nature. So it's all about that, which is a wonderful. Oh, that's a wonderful mission. Wonderful. So the question was, we're looking to set her free. Is she ready? So imagine this. When I see all the scenes, it's all very uplifting but it's also very innocent. So in effect, she comes back with, all through visions, so when I put words to it, it's the visions, but she comes back with showing territory. And I, see, these aren't things I know. I don't know if skunks have territory. She could show the territory and she could show herself coming back. My words to that would be, she's got an internal mapping system. So my words would be that from the vision. And she'd show how proud she was coming back. Well, that's failure number one. She can't go out, she's gonna come back. She's gonna be staying. And her next big thing was the joy to express she's never learned what a predator is. Well, I don't know what a skunk predator is. I don't know in the rainforest yeah. who would kill a skunk. But her joy was truly to express, I haven't learned that. And if there would be a human, she'd gravitate. Yes. So, of course, these are all concerns. But her innocence and her delivery of it would be this is what I'll do, I'll find my way home, and if there's a human, I'll go up. Well, that will cost her her life. You can imagine a stranger, they're gonna think she's rabbit. A rabbit. Mm -hmm. That's exactly a rabbit skunk, because that's the, but I tell you, he's exactly. been here in the US. Yeah. Skunk approaches you in broad daylight, take it out. Yeah. 
that would be a terrible thing. And then the other cool thing, bottom line asking her, and I think this is what she stated, I can't remember exactly, it was something like the timeline. She thought she had, maybe it was till March, maybe it was till March, she thought she had a set time. And then the vet came back with, that's exactly it, we will give her this quantitative time to see if she can get ready. And if she doesn't, it means she's going to stay. She needs to stay. Yeah. So in her new territory. <laughs> in a new territory there. And in an ideal world, if she'd stayed, she her vision would be, I'd be in somewhere safe at night, and in the day terror, I'd wander around the country. And I'm thinking, I wonder if that's possible. Could she be the meet and greet? But, but it was a cute vision of, oh, no, I'm not going to be I locked up. Here. I have a job, <laughs> and this is what it will look like, and I'll be around the sanctuary. And you think, okay, let's see. So it would be wonderful to see how it unfolds. But the realisation was the beauty of her play, her innocence, her innocence of telling the story, answering the questions that don't go in her favour for release, but also to realise the behaviour pattern would be she did not skunk anybody. Yeah. And she didn't because she felt safe and comfortable. And a skunk will not do anything unless they're cornered or they're concerned. And I learned that from that. To realise, look, it's not it's something to be feared. You're not going to just go around doing it. It's if they feel like they're under attack. Under attack. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Nature builds in those uh, defense mechanisms. Yeah. That's yeah. a beautiful story. It was lovely. <laughs> it's one, one of them. And so the second one, if I can share that with you, is pretty neat too. So we came back and there's another cage covered. And in there was a toucan. Oh. And um, a wild toucan, and in a little cage. And their question truly was a very small question. And it was, well, one I had to ask it, does he have a name? And they'd named him, not knowing if it's a him or her. Oh, yeah. Not being able to examine. But the other one was, is he healthy enough to be released? Talk about a flip. Felt heart, chest constricted, all the joy left. Mm. I felt tight. Um, and it was an instant moment of this doesn't feel good. So, and his vision to what he shared and what he showed was not being able to sustain being in the air and flying it instantly. So if you could imagine seeing what you can in a tree yeah. and not necessarily being able to sustain it. So with that, he showed concerns of another bird coming down. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which bird that would be, but he could be under attack. Yeah. So and he answered that question. Away. Exactly. So he wasn't well enough. He wasn't well. When they asked, could he explain what had happened, the piece that I got that seemed very important was um, an action from here to here, like a sharp action from here to here, which would be this. Um, so I could feel this area and a sharp action. I wasn't sure what that action was. You, and that's where the mind could take over to go, what represents this? Well, it turned out it was a vehicle. The vehicle had clipped him. Oh. So that was fascinating. And his big piece, which I thought was profound, he showed it's affected this area, but not his organs. That's mm. huge, because yes. if, if your organs are okay, and the rib cage protects the organs, now we're looking at a wing. Just to repair the wing and let it recuperate, yeah. get back his yes. strength. That's beautiful. You know what I love that you're sharing, and I think you teach us in your animal communication courses then, is that there are so many different ways to pick up information. Yes, yeah, right, right. So uh, it could be kinesthetic. So yeah. you can choose to tune into the body. Yes. You can choose to tune into their mind. Yeah. Um, Emotion. Emotions. Yeah. Personality. Even sense it. So this, if that action was more of a sensing, I sense that that's coming from here. And even the hand involuntarily doing that, that you realize, hmm, it must have come at an angle. And so it may be that you feel it in the body or indeed have an inner knowing, a sense like that. But the imploding and depression, that was a big piece. And it also means that the people working with them then can make the adjustments to realize, okay, He's right, we're not dealing with organs, so let's look at the rehab. Yeah. And put him in maybe a larger space. Yeah. And if it's engaged to jungle a little bit, even if it's in a confined area. Yeah. And mm -hmm. how do we move through this to support him? Oh, you know, that's a wonderful application. To blend. Yeah, I, blend you know, I, I think one of the 
in a new world now. I, you know, animal communication used to be that hoo 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 thing, and you didn't hear much about it. That I, you know, it's to me, it's it's not mainstream yet, but it's the reality that um, that that all beings, all life has sentience, right? That there yeah. is a there is a, a soul there. Yeah. And through animal communication, we can find a different way to connect so that we can uh, do, I think, what is our really original heritage, which is to be stewards and givers, right? Yeah. And so once I learn that I can do that, I can be more respectful. And then there can be employment within that. If you think about it, I think we're going to reach an age where animal communicators will be hired to come in to do right. that, to work alongside with a vet. Right. No, okay. And that's how I or see it. the vet's to learn that. Yeah. Because I can't imagine going to my physician now and them just having to guess because I won't talk to them about what I'm feeling and what's going inside. So I, I think it's beautiful that you're one of the few people out there teaching who are helping to open the door to say, oh, there is a way to hear them. Yeah. There is a way to connect with them. There is a way to sense what's going on there in the body to help drive your knowledge to help them in the healing yeah. journey. When you've got somebody asking, are they going to make it? Does that mean that they're considering euthanasia? Because it feels like the right thing to do. And can this perception alone allow them to know what to move forward with? Mm -hmm. What's the best action? So if we can help with alleviating the depression, the body can heal itself, that kind of thing. And then we can integrate the Eastern with the Western because we need them both. And so that was the nice piece with that particular individual. I mean, I know I think the other power of it too is think about what you've done for those workers because if you're able to share that the toucan had depression, it could be over the environment and just the simple thing of communicating this is, oh no, you're going to go back to the wild That's when it. you're ready, can be all it takes to lift that fog. Oh, and so sitting there, of course, I'm like this, so I don't see a lot, but what they revealed later, because we happened to go back, what they revealed later was that the toucans, when they're under stress, they open their mouths, so they're pant. So it will look like this. Kind of like a dog. Exactly. Well, he'd never had anybody this close. My chair was from here to there. And they had recommended I not necessarily do that if he's under stress. Well, I'd looked and I felt he's not under stress, not knowing the signs. He only did it once. And then what was really cute that they noticed too, He'd peek around the little sheet. So when everyone I'm talking to him, then I go, okay, this is what I've got. You'd see him peek. And he wasn't under stress. So that, that for me, is the magical what moment. We've got a wild animal peeking around this <laughs> cage. It, it, yeah, it's smashing. It's beautiful. Oh, and that changes everything. And I thank you for sharing the video so that we oh, can you, you know, let people travel vicariously yeah. with you to Costa Rica to yeah. experience. And, and see that interaction and and even see the instant validation for those that may think this isn't possible or how do you know? Well, these animals are usually under stress. So he's not under stress. So there's something concrete right away. And it's not like we had strong conversation, nothing. All I knew was a name that might not even be attached to. It. So imagine that, I'm sat there and there was a little bit of nervousness because I said, what's his name? And they went, well, such and such. Does he know his name? So I'm sat there thinking, if he doesn't know his name, I'm not gonna get the connection, but I'm close enough to feel his energy. That's what I went with. I'd like to be close enough to be able to say, I'm your messenger. If you can share something with me today, we can support you in this healing process so that you can go back out to freedom. And it, and it worked. And it worked. You know, is that he yeah. felt your intent yeah. immediately. Yeah. That's beautiful. It's cool. So I take it you'll do another one of these trips in the future. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. How do I, um, for those who have been watching this that are interested, because I know you take students with you, right? Yes. So it's the idea that you've done experience, you've gone through programming, and then you can join on the retreats in order to go really put what you've learned yeah. to work. Um, how do I find out more information about your classes? Through reachouttohorses.com. So don't let the name fool you because people will think it's just horses and that's how it began. It's where my heart is as well. But at the same time, it's all species. So it's the wild one. It's not just the dogs, <laughs> cats, horses. It's all species. And we have, we've been to wildlife sanctuaries as well in order to experience it with the wild ones. Or indeed, you can go out into nature. And we were fortunate when we went to the coastline that you can put it out there. But I, you know, I'd love to see a macaw fly over. 
or put it out there, we'd love to appreciate the beauty of. And then we did, we saw them, of course. And the one that we did manifest too, we knew we were going to the sloth sanctuary, but how neat to see a sloth out in the wild in their natural yes. habitat. You'd never see them. No. Is there a night creature? So they're night seen. creatures. And the big thing really is your eye is not trained. So as a, as a tourist or a guest in a country, you're not going to see them. So the sloth that we got to see, he would have looked like um, oh, shoot, a coconut. <laughs> He's in a coconut. And, and the hair is the same color as the You have to know to look for those long. <laughs> Were well, they cuddled up? Are they cuddled so up? So what you see is the back. back. Yeah. <laughs> that's so adorable. somebody has to tell you that's a sloth. But we saw them. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. And then you see them just look. And they have this beautiful <laughs> smile, beautiful smile on their faces. Oh, so it's gosh. fortunate to connect with a little sloth mm -hmm. too. I can't remember how old, but only as large as your hand if you wish. And she would feed him. She was um, taking care of the nursery. The two wonderful girls, they were Danny and Monica, and they take care of the nursery. You'd have little areas where these anteaters and sloths and so on were, and they live in a small area and there's a bed there. And every four hours they feed them. These are unbelievably dedicated individuals with hearts bigger than you can imagine <sighs> because you're living in a jungle, you're working 24 7 because you're there every four hours. And if you think you have to be patient with horses, think again when it comes to feeding a sloth. <laughs> and because you've got a little thing, a little injection type thing, and you're trickling it down. And when the sloth says, I've had enough, they just hmm. <laughs> And then, you know, you can't chase them. So you have to go to speed. And one of the concerns is if that milk goes where it shouldn't go, it goes to the lungs. So it's not like you can chase them and go, you're going to have the milk because it could go in the wrong area, which can be fatal. Right. So it's very important. There's a ton of patience. And so connecting with a little one like that and hearing how he feels physically, what are the concerns? How can we support them best to go back in nature? And one thing I didn't know, I know that they had, and one of the validations in a way, was this little guy showed he couldn't hang yet. So of course, as a, as a normal person, person in a while, yeah, you may think they're born and ready to hold and hang, as did I, but he showed, no, in his little cage, he has little padding underneath. So he might have the action, but he's not actually doing it. So they will show you stuff like that, that you couldn't know. You couldn't make up. You, you know it's genuine, it's real. It's telling you their likes, their concerns, how they need to be held, stuff oh. like that. I think it's a wonderful experience for your students on animal communication. I know in the classes I've taken on it that people yeah. take it away from themselves because they're familiar with the animals in their environment. Yeah. I understand enough about dog behavior that is it because I expect the dog to do that or I heard from the dog. But when you take them to an experience, just like you're describing, with animals I don't have any contact with, I have no way to take it away. That's it. I'm getting impressions and I just have to put it out there and get validation yeah. and said, yep. So it's a very strong reinforcer. It's, it's huge. And then the wild ones, it gives you a different impression too, because we can have the clouded vision with our own. You guys experience this, that it could be a memory or the fact that you're so attached. And here, there's a vulnerability in not knowing anything. Yeah. And you're putting yourself out there. And it gives that animal a voice, but it gives a wild one a voice. That yeah. changes an awful lot too, because in domestication, for the most part, in our country, they're taken care of. And we're looking at that traditional piece for one reason or another. But here, it would be life or death for this wild one. If we can add in the fact that eucalyptus can make the difference in the breathing, that could save the little guy's life. That's huge. Yes. And they can dabble. People can dabble trying to find the solution or try to find the alternative therapy but knowing that they can come up with that now did he come up with that because he's so small did he really come up with that or did he hear them talk about it but either way it doesn't matter because mm -hmm. it's a solution yep it's a solution and yes you would then come out of it because later on i go well where did he get that from where where am i getting that information from because it's directly from the animal but how would a two-month-old sloth know eucalyptus 
well, we can think about that when we come out of the session to yeah. realize, did you guys chat about it and get whatever we need as a human in our answers to find the closure is what it is, to find that closure. Because that's a little piece that I might just need, is yeah. to understand what, what do these impressions mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful experience. Yeah. Well, if you'd like more information, and I'm going to go ahead, take a look at Anna's website. We have it uh, linked on our website and on the video below. Um, she's a fabulous animal communicator and uh, offers, I think, a real heartfelt connection with the animals. And, and it's unique. Yeah. A lot of teachers are um, good communicators. What I find different about you, Anna, is that it truly is it's a soul level connection. You, you look soul at it as a way for us to make an impact in the world. So I appreciate Absolutely. you having me. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for the mm -hmm. time today. Thank you.